Hi, this is Wax from Team uh, Area 51 and ESCA Invite and CVO P last season. I'm just doing a commentary here for Wansource.com. Um, this is our Week 1-2 match against uh, Check 6 Gaming of well last week. Um, we kind of got our ass kicked, and I'm gonna I'm doing a commentary on this because we made a lot of mistakes. I'd like to elaborate on ways we could have fixed them or things we could have done. Basically, just give you an idea of how what I think are some of the key points in this map being DE Contra. Um, you'll notice throughout my commentary here that I mention a lot about map control in this map, especially on T side. Um, it's really important to make the CTs think you're going at least working B a little bit, and it's also really important to have pressure at lower A. Otherwise, the CTs are just able to collapse on you and over rotate and retake every site no matter what you do. Um, you'll notice this a lot as we kind of get our shit stomped, like I said. So I'm going to go ahead and start here on uh, our T side pistol. And uh, basically, what we do is we decide to run a 3 2 with three going up middle and myself and Dutch outside B with the bomb. Now, we practiced this, this strat a few times and it worked out pretty well, so we decided to go with it. Um, what we do mainly is. Uh, they, those three guys work out middle, and they pre-nade the, the cr window cross, like where you would see the cross to B from uh, mid. And then they work into Cathedral, and we take B at the same time. So with that being going on, you notice I just saw one there. Um, we're, able to get in, we're able to get in sight and plank relatively easily. I throw kind of a stupid flash. Um, we're able to plant the bomb, but you'll notice right here on my screen, I have two guys in sight that are kind of in bad spots, like one of them should have planted immediately, the other one should have gotten in a better spot, but it really doesn't matter at this point, we win the round regardless. Um, so I see a guy under the bridge and we just kill him, and we eventually do win the round. Fairly successfully, I'd say the strat worked out well. Um, just turn my volume down there. Anyway, so what we're doing now for our next strat, for our second round here. Um, this is this is our first error of the match, really, and it's my fault, so it's pretty good that you're watching my POV. Um, I'm, what we do is we set up anti-eco with a 2-1-2, and what happens is we decide to work in the A, which for us generally would mean three upper with the bomb, and one guy drops, and two go out lower. But I took way too long in middle, and I got killed, as you'll see in a minute. So we're just set up right now. Um... I'm just kind of chucking nades, trying to get this guy to peek me again so I can kill him, and we can take the site. After a certain point, we all decide to just regroup it, A. Okay, so you'll notice I see blood, so I call there was one there, and I know he's probably playing up close. It's kind of a boring 30 seconds here. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I'm just chilling, I'm just peeking back and forth. You'll notice I do this on a lot of rounds, even just on our default outwork middle. Um, so now our guys are starting to work back towards A as you can see on my radar. So at this point here when the bomb meets up with me in like right now, I should be going A, but instead for whatever reason I decided to be a good idea to fake middle a little bit more, which really was not useful at all at this point cuz they're already like we've already faked out B a little bit. Now it's just regroup and go. But see, because I was out of position, that guy was able to peek out cathedral and just basically two tap me and my teammates were all going upper, so I was completely useless and shut down. Now what happens here, we go at upper my four teammates, uh, they get out pretty successfully. The only issue I have here is that when they got out, they had two guys drop to site, and neither of them really cleared that box right in front of them, which recently has become a really, a really easy spot to play. So, UTP is able to kill a bomb planter, and Flash Steps able to flash with my gun because I died in mid, and they win the round. Now you'll notice I don't make that mistake in middle again. In later rounds, I don't I don't sit around, sit around in mid for too long. I usually try to do something quicker, which is kind of important. Now, okay, this is our third round here, and uh, we're kind of kind of on a save, so we, we decided to dig up. We did win the first round, so we have a little bit of money, but we want to be able to buy next round. So the problem is Brunt here. We decided to kind of like Brundle decided to go make noise B. He's our strat caller for this match. And it didn't really work because they pushed lower A and they're able to see one of our guys here. Actually, I believe they did spot that guy lower. They didn't actually push it. So now they kill the guy with an op and our B's compromised because they killed Brundle. So we're pretty much forced to just go out upper as quick as we can. So I'm able to get a kill blind there, which is kind of cool. See, right here I'm going down the ramp. And what I should have done, instead of trying, like my teammate Sand, what I should have done is just ran spawn to B. 
and planted the bomb knowing that they were likely going to be flanking from B to upper like they did the previous round. But, you know, I was just trying to help my teammate out and I died. So in future rounds, um, you know, it's probably the only time I'll ever say this, but I should have baited a little more and just ran B with the bomb. Would have uh, would have planted the bomb. And I probably would have had a better chance to win. So anyway, we did we did eco or half buy last round. So uh, we decided to full buy this round, or at least I do anyway, because I don't know, whatever. So I'm able to dodge these flashes, my own and one of theirs, and I get into sight pretty easily. I do get blind, but I needed dark room. So I know there's one in dark, and I know there's one in sight. I'm able to kill this guy in sight, but you notice again. I'm kind of like spamming Darkroom, so he's not going to peek out. But you notice I have two teammates just kind of chilling inside here. And relatively stupid of them. Again, one of them should have just planted and ran away so that we could uh, get into better positions. We, we do win this round, and I believe Brundle gets the final kill here chasing down UTP, which is big. Because at this point, we, uh, we kind of screwed ourselves on the eco rounds, which are important. And winning the first gun round is really key in any match. Um, aside from that... This round's pretty much over. All right, so our default on T side, we uh, we work a pretty basic setup. We like, I mean, I don't want to keep. We try to keep it pretty simple on this map because it is so confined and map control is so important. But uh, <laughs> we realized after this that some of our teammates had different ideas on our strategies than others. So our default right now is me working middle. We have two working A and two working B. Um, but you'll notice if you watch my radar. I didn't notice this during the match, but my guy that goes lower doesn't actually take proper control of lower. He just sits in the caverns and kind of watches Cathedral. So right now, it's more or less a one guy working upper, two guys, and you notice my B guys are way back in T-spawn. So it's like two guys way back in spawn, and one guy way back upper, and one working upper, and I'm way back mid. So it's like we're not even really doing anything. And this, believe it or not, was supposed to be our default. We're not actually sitting anti-eco. So we do notice a guy in Cathedral. We try to nade him, do whatever. Um... Yeah, like I'm saying, it's pretty standard, but we decided to go back to A, which once again means that we should have two or three going upper, preferably two and, and three guys going lower. But um, you'll notice again, just watch my radar here, and this is something I told them this round. This guy, there's, we have one guy in Cathedral, one guy outside B with the bomb, and one was walking up middle. Now, the only guy out of those three doing his job is the guy that grabbed the bomb. The rest of them are supposed to be coming lower. Now, you notice again... On my radar, there I saw two CTs lower on my radar. So if we had had those two guys in lower like they're supposed to be, we probably would have gotten those two kills, and we would have been able to plant A. And myself and Dutch wouldn't have died, and we would have won this round. So my teammates do decide to fall back to B, which was a good call. Um, the CTs were like half bot, ecoing. So, you'll notice I'm watching Jules' point of view here for this last last little bit of the round, and he pushes way into CD spawn, which is, you know, it's it's a questionable idea, but uh, his main problem here was trying to uh, compete with Colo in the site after. he What he should have done is while he was in spawn, he should have just ran window and gone sand to plank, which would have been a lot more helpful. Um, now Brundle's in a 1v2 situa 1v3 situation, sorry. And, uh... He's just trying to stay alive, but he's unable to do so. So that part, that round, again, was just people not doing what they're supposed to do on the strategy. So, I mean, realistically, the key thing there is just listen to your strat caller. That's all I can really say. So we got the bomb down a couple rounds, and we won two out of, what is it, four, three now. Uh, two out of five, sorry. And uh, we decided to buy up. So I basically just buy, like, an op and nades. And that's it. I'm picking middle, doing my default kind of work. What I'm doing is just spamming the boxes, because what I hope is that he's playing Cathedral, and that these shots will just draw him out, because a lot of people like to pick, like, just a quick peek after they hear an off shot. So, I'm just kind of working the angles. So, this round, I decided to go upper. It tends to be one of our strongest points in scrims and practice, so that's what we did. Um, again, you'll notice we have, we have four people upper, including myself. Now, I'm supposed to be there. And being that two of them didn't buy, which is bad communication on our part, um, they decided instead to, instead of going lower to just come upper, which was not a good idea. If they'd gone lower with those deagles, they probably would have been a little bit more useful, considering they just died up top. Notice this smoke right in front of me. The CTs do the smoke a lot, and I'll mention it in a second why it's important. So I just got flanked and uh, killed. But anyway, they, th they throw that smoke down right in the middle, 
And what it is is it forces the terrorists to jump into the muck, and then all they do is they just sit. They can sit in the muck themselves and just spray you as you come out of that smoke. And it worked really well against us. And I noticed that watching the demo after our match. And I was like, yeah, we should we should have done that because it's it's really smart. All right, so this is um once again I'm buying I got an op. Our team finally on track with our buys, which is kind of embarrassing for me to admit to you that we're so uncoordinated early on this match. Again, I'm just working the middle pick, and we do have three people working upper. You'll notice this round, I'm going to say that a lot, um, we do have a guy who's pushed up lower, so this round will probably go a lot better for us because we do have that map control. Our B guy's starting to fall back, which is just to regroup, grab the bomb, and whatnot. <clears throat> Again, just spamming to try to get that guy to come out. Um, just working middle. I gotta say, if you're playing CT middle and you're opping, for me right now working this position, you notice I check back and forth both sides. And the reason for that is because if I'm a CT and I random peek, I can get that kill probably 7 out of 10 times. Whereas on terrorist, I kind of watch both, right? And a lot of teams do play one guy middle like that, but it just depends how he wants to play it. So this round we have one guy who's decided to kind of sell a fake at A. He doesn't really do it. I missed a, a shot there that I probably should have hit. And we're, fortunately, we were able to get an entry into B. Now, this round, you'll notice I'm playing a spot, and I, I see a guy sand. I'm not even going to comment on that. I should have hit that shot. But um, the thing is, when I get outside box here, I really love this spot right where I am. But I've only got 10 HP, and I'm standing too close to the entrance. See, if my teammates, well, if the one teammate here had stayed alive, and I hadn't gotten naded there, or if I had a little bit more HP, then we probably would win this round because that spot is so crucial. Instead, once again, Brundle's put in a 1v2 or 1v3 situation, and he's unable to hold it from dark spot. Alright, so this is kind of like our first real eco of the match, which is, looking at the money now, we probably could have bought. Actually, no, that's a lie, sorry. <laughs> Terrible lie. Anyway, so, we decided we're going to walk out upper. Which is maybe, actually, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm calling the wrong round. We decided we're going to walk B, which right now you can tell this is kind of where we stay, right? We just sit outside B near T-spawn. Um, my preference is to get up to the bridge, which is why I kind of like lead the pack. Um, the reason for that, I don't like to cross the bridge because obviously they'll see you, but I like to get up close because if they push out box room, you got to be close enough to get that kill. See, so what they do is they basically just flash and they nade us and they just destroy us with this anti eco with two or three guys there in my opinion because we just weren't close enough see you'll notice they play aggressive they played aggressive b and that's why i say that map control on this map is so important like we got to make a presence of b otherwise they're just going to do that have one guy sit there and the other two rotate off anyway so this round we decided to do a different strat we're not working like a default setup anymore um, we're kind of just going straight heavy A. We figured we're taking too long on it because they are heavy B. Um, so I'm trying to get up to do a pick and, you know, my teammates kind of blocking me and now we're watching, walking. But, um, I do this jump peek here. I don't really see anything, but, you know. All we're doing is we're slow picking up. Or as soon as one sees us, we're going to explode on the site as quickly as we can. Um, the one guy B is going to try to, like, watch our flank. So we're very much heavily committed to upper which we kind of feel is, once again, is our strongest point on this map, but it doesn't seem to work out for us. For this match, anyway. Now, no motive shouldn't have gone in that box. That was kind of stupid of him. And I can say that because Peter knows I love him. But I'm just spamming this. You see that smoke again. Nothing I can do about it. They're just going to spam us through it. Now, this right here, I get the trade on this guy in sight, which is really important. But now it's 1v1. I know where this guy is, I know he's at the bottom of CT ramp, or at least near there. So I flash in twice, hoping to get him to like make a push after the first one. Which, again, he does. Being that uh, I'm kind of low, I don't have any armor, I go to pick up the AK, try to find the bomb. I don't know if you can see the time right now, it's kind of it's kind of shady, but I do only have like 20 seconds on the clock. So, I hear this guy, he goes, he goes right side muck near T side. And then he walks back to CT side. So I clear it. I know he's not out there because I would have heard him jump. And it just happens that he was posted up at kind of an angle 
that it wasn't tight enough for me to peek out quick. Like, he pretty much just had his eyes on me the whole time, which is rather unfortunate. If he'd been playing a little bit closer to the wall, I would have gotten that kill, and uh, that would have been it. But what I should have done there is planted in front of the boxes in sight, because then he would have had to jump over that ledge in upper muck, and I would have heard him jump, and I probably would have got the plan off, and I would have been able to get better positioning on him. So this round we do an eco B rush. Um, the CTs on this side do a much better job of counter flashing. So I'm completely blind, and they just peek out and kill us down, mow us down basically. Again, I'm not sure why those two guys bought, but you know. Yeah, we have a, we have a few rounds like that. I'm I'm embarrassed to say. So this round, you'll notice one of my teammates gets picked in mid, and I told him pretty much at the beginning of the match, like, stay out of middle unless you're going to do smoke and go, like, sand or something. Because it's really difficult for me to watch both sides, like I was telling you earlier. So I'm posted up. I'm doing my, my usual thing. I'm able to get a nice trade on the guy in middle after he does kill my teammate crossing. But, again, he shouldn't have been there in the first place. So um, we're, we're shorthanded just because he didn't listen. Now, this is exactly what I'm talking about map control. That guy's able to push Cathedral because he knows we're not going B because my teammate is right here in T-spawn. See, if he'd been up near box room already, they'd still have 2 and B. I wouldn't have had to miss that shot, which I shouldn't have missed. But uh, but we'd have been able to uh, to keep that guy mid, and we would have taken A a lot easier. But now they know we're definitely going A because we're not at B at all. So we've got some bad communication here, and my teammates are taking A. By the time they tell me to come A, I'm way back, and not much I can do to help them get into sight. I'm just running to catch up. So uh, Ridox there pretty much mows down our team every round. I've got 7 HP. Um, Dutch is able to make a nice move here. He walks into their uh, their stairway. You can see him on my radar. He's able to get two kills. And then we know the last guy plays B because it's the guy that I missed the shot on. And uh, I'm just he plants, and I just try to cover with my 7 HP. He is able to get the plan off before the other guy peeks, which is kind of random. He should have peeked while my teammate was planning. Because if I'd missed the shot then, he would only have one guy shooting at him. But he is able to get the kill on Dutch, but I get the quick trade. So his mistake there was not peeking while Dutch was planning. So that's that's the only other route we went on this T side, which is kind of embarrassing to say. I'll admit it. But, you know, this commentary is about learning from your mistakes, right? And we learned a lot after this match, especially about map control. So this round, I'm gonna say just watch my watch my radar for the first little bit anyway. That smoke I just saw, I know there was one playing sand because of how it landed. Um, so watch my radar. We've got one guy way back B again, and then I go there, and we've got two guys playing way back A. <clears throat> and uh, you'll notice when I get closer to the middle that they're sitting way back, like in lower A, both of them near the first room you go into with uh, with the spam of the lock stopper. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in about two seconds. And the reason this is bad is because if they had gotten up closer, lower, then by the time we got out upper, they'd already be near sewer cap or in sight. But now you can see they're way the fuck back there. They're alone, they're confined, and that confines us as well. Again, relating to my point of map control. And again, the CTs put that smoke down at upper and completely just fuck us through it. I'm able to get a nice entry on Colo, but Redox jumps out of that smoke exactly like I was just telling you and uh, kills me, and Dutch is left in a 1v3 situation. He's able to uh, to kill UTP, but he gets flanked from upper and just killed. So you can see, you can tell just by how the CTs are playing, they're just flanking us all over the place. And that's only, it's not because we're not like, uh, we're not hitting the sights often enough. It's just because we're not, we don't have any map control, and they, they feel like they have confidence to go anywhere, and it's just no good. Alright, so this round we're on eco again. Um, pretty uneventful, pretty unorganized on our part. So, you'll notice no motive dies B right away. Um, no trades made, obviously, because it was picked crossing. But you'll notice now that my teammates run upper, and I go out the muck. Now, I'm out by myself for a good 5-6 seconds there before my teammates come out, and I had the bomb. So they've got three guys rotated already, they have full map control. And... No trades were made, and basically all I can say is on eco rounds, you got to stick together. Everybody's got to be basically humping each other's legs, just uh, otherwise you just get bent over, and 
one shot drying or spit, they just fuck you. Alright, so this round, we decided, this is a round we did a lot in practice, but we didn't actually run in the, in the match, because we weren't having any success really at A. Um, we decided we were going to fake lower, which would work if we could actually get map control, but uh, and then walk the bomb on upper, and those guys were basically fake sewer, and one guy would go to B, and the other two would just chill in sewer, try to get followers, flankers, and then Dutch and I would plant the bomb A, and we'd win. That's the strat, <laughs> basically. But it doesn't necessarily work for us, because, again... The CTs are just rushing everything, and they're able to completely stop our lower rush, no problem. So, we we just got picked off here. It's nothing too fancy on the CTs part. It's really good that they're playing aggressive like that. It shows they're confident, which is important. Alright, so this round takes a little bit longer. I buy up an AK. And uh, it's the last round of the half. So what we're doing now is we, like, they're finally getting the clue that they need to have a little bit of map control lower. And B as well. But what we decided to do is we're going to do work the default court, sort of, and come back to B. Now, I'm not seeing anything mid, and we're just kind of, like, deciding that we want to come back B when we want to do it. Where we want to work picks. So I'm coming back at the bomb. Now, what happens here is right now, I, I can very specifically remember this from the match. I'm saying, hey guys, come back B right now. I got my bomb out. I'm just chilling, right? I'm just having a good time. And my teammates are still over A. I'm like, yo, guys, come back A. Or, sorry, come back B right now. But it doesn't quite work out that way. And all three of them managed to die in like two seconds, as you can see right now. So now me and Brunner are like, well, fuck, they're supposed to come back. So, we've got 45 seconds. We know there's 4 at A because of the calls. Um, which, well, we thought there was 4 at A. Quick, quick flank through sewers and plank. We're able to get two kills here. Um, I, what I should have done right here, you notice where I'm planning. This used to be a good plant spot, but what I should have done is plant it closer to the door, knowing that I wasn't going to be able to get any further away from the bomb. So, I needed to be able to play the bomb from inside dark. And I'm just not able to do that here. I try to push out and get the kill, but it just if the bomb had been planted better, I would have won that round. And that's my own fault for not planning it for myself. So half score is uh twelve three for the for check six gaming. They had a they had a really strong C T side against us. Uh, mainly I'm gonna say it's our own fault. We we did a lot better in scrims, but we obviously didn't practice hard enough. Because we were really uncoordinated and we really didn't have the map control, which I knew we needed, and like it's pretty much the fundamentals of this map. But for whatever reason, somebody was under the impression that we didn't need it in the spots where we did need it, and our strategy was was fucked from the beginning, and we just weren't able to adapt. Or we should have been able to adapt, but we didn't because we're idiots. So. The pistol around here on CT side. I play middle on both sides of the map, basically. Um, my job is effectively just to call the rush B, and if they do rush B, quick rotate to B. Otherwise, if they call a rush at A, I, I rotate sands or CT spawn. Now, they're not calling a rush at either side, which is kind of random. So I'm just kind of chilling mid. I'm trying to make sure they don't come up mid on me. And right now, I should be rotating. But instead, I'm just kind of working angles in mid. So now I'm rotating spawn. And unfortunately, it's just too little, too late. We get two trades or two kills, and Colo's already down the ramp at sight, which tells me that either the calls were too late by my teammates, or I just took too long rotating. So, so we kind of got our shit stomped here. <laughs> um, the next round here is kind of embarrassing. Basically, what happens is uh, I'm able to get the first kill. Actually, maybe I'm reading the wrong round here. I got notes. <laughs> No, yeah, I'm sorry. So, this round here, we're on eco. We're full saving. We need to try to buy out next round or the round after to win. So, I'm calling I'm calling the rush. There's a B rush. And Colo sitting middle, crouched with a scout. Now, I'm not exactly sure how he just did that. I did watch his point of view in the demo. And I don't think he was just sitting there. But on my screen, it looked like he was just crouched sitting in place. Which is pretty pretty awesome on his part, I gotta say. Way to go, Colo. You're, you're a real trooper. And, of course, he's talking shit, which is always fun. 
All right, so this round here, I'm playing middle again. Um, same deal, I'm calling the cross. I know a terrorist just shot bullets at my teammate, and they needed mid. So I know they're going to be coming up mid, or at least working it. I do happen to catch the bomber right up close on me. I'm not sure what he's doing there by himself, but obviously they just thought we were shit at this point and decided to go all over the place. So I rotate back to B. The reason I left the bomb there is because I know I have a teammate in B, and I want to be able to regroup with him so we can play it together rather than playing it solo later on. So I find myself a Famas. I try to get into a better spot to watch where they could go to a site, assuming that they're going to pick up the bomb regardless. So I'm trying to get a little bit random. I get into a decent spot, and Colo, once again with the scout, just pretty much destroys me. And it's kind of embarrassing, but you know what? Shit happens. So now my teammates do win out the round. Um, Brundle's playing in the mid window, and Dutch is playing Ace Sands. And Dutch is able to give enough cover fire that Brundle gets the kill here in the end. Just playing the bomb. Alright, so this round here, I'm watching middle of my op. Um, I'm watching the cross, sorry, with my op. And I call the cross, and I rotate quickly to B, you'll notice. But uh, we notice pretty easily, or I do anyway, that they're not coming into sight. They just, it was a fake. It was a brutal fake. And I probably shouldn't have rotated so quickly. But, you know, at this point, I just don't want to lose any more rounds, so I did rotate. Um, they don't get in, or maybe one guy got in. And then falls back. I don't even know where that guy went. I was just shooting at. So I go back. And I'm calling pretty pretty quickly that it was just a fake. So I go back to A. Fortunately, we were able to call her fake really easy. So I get back to A. They're smoked out upper. I flash once. Or twice, sorry. And then I play this angle here, upper. Just watching the muck. And I'm able to get a kill. Now... One thing you gotta do when you're playing this game, especially on this map, is just don't peek shit. Like me, I'm kind of in a bad spot right now, cause there's two alive and I'm kind of pinched. Like that's that's acceptable. You don't know it yet, but there's a T side right to my left up here in our CT muck. So I'm kind of pinched when UTP was alive and I'm watching shit. Like if he jumped right now, I was dead. I didn't know that. But so I go back to the bottom of the ramp, and I'm just watching like lower A or whatever, I notice he's firing. My teammates here, this is what's bad about this round, they all peek him. All three of them peek. And I'm sitting here, I'm saying, dude, he's got 25 seconds. He has to do something. Just don't peek him. But one of my teammates here does peek, he gets killed. And I'm kind of like yelling now. I'm like, stop fucking peeking this guy. And I am able to kill him while he's planning or trying to plant. So that almost got a little bad with everybody peeking them solo, but you know, we were able to pull it out, so it's all good. All right, so this round, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna be calling from my point of view, but really just watch the terrorist side because what happens is they push B and effectively rotate to B, like I did the last round as well, and then they sl and then I rotate back, and then they slow take on B. And what this does is this pushes me out of position, like, like all over the place. So I'm thinking they're going back to A like they did the previous round. And then my teammate in plank room probably assumed the same thing. So he's probably starting to rotate back to A, which leaves one guy in B solo. And they're able to take it. And all this is only because they have proper map control on B, just by getting me to rotate B in the beginning. So now we're watching, watching middle. You'll notice I got no call, otherwise I'd be moving right now. But they, they take B, now there's a call. And they're in sight before I can do anything. I, I rotate spawn and I'm blind, which is perfect on the T terrorist side. This is how strats should be run. I, I give them a lot of credit for that. That take was actually really nice. Um, we are able to retake. You'll notice Dutch and I both just naded plank room and killed our teammate because he didn't tell us he was coming from there. We're too busy trying to kill kids to even notice. So again, communication is key. But we were able to defuse the bomb and win the round. So that's good. <laughs> good news. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so uh, this first this round here, I have a deagle. I'm saving for last, pretty much. Um, I call the cross with the deagle. There's nothing there. 
I don't want to say smoke it, but I can't pick it right like that, obviously. So I'm playing aggressive in the middle. I like to do this from time to time. Um, I didn't really have a chance because we didn't get a lot of rounds on T side. But I like to be aggressive in the middle. Now, my teammate just naded. I know it hit because I heard it. And I know that they haven't had any pressure in mid, so why would they be watching? What I should do right now is walk, but I'm able to kill their opper. And I didn't see the guy to my left. He's able to trade on me. Which, if I had seen that guy, I probably would have killed him, and we probably would have won this round. But, regardless, you get, just gotta. It's good to play aggressive randomly sometimes. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to win this round just because of picks on the other side. And, Check 6 just had good crossfires on pretty much everything at that point. So now it's the last round. Um, well, sorry, it's 15 to 6 for the other team. All I've got is 3,500, so I buy my standard uh, kit flash Colt, which which is uh, which pretty much a full buy for me. <laughs> so I'm playing middle with the Colt. I noticed last round that I was able to push up middle pretty easily, so I'm I'm kind of thinking I can do the same, even though they're smoking me out. But I figure those smokes are from spawn. So after checking it out, I figured that's exactly what they are. I know I know they're taking B. I know they got to kill at A, so they're probably just working shit. I have quite the firefight here with a guy in Cathedral. And I know he's going towards B. So knowing that and knowing they just had more guys in B, I decided to flank T spawn, which I think at the time was a great idea. I'm able to kill one guy jumping up on the boxes, which is kind of cool. Um, so I know for sure that they're there. My teammate's in sight or in dark room. He gets killed, unfortunately. So now it's a 1v2 situation. Now, I heard him sewer, but I was kind of hoping he was just faking and that his teammate was there. Not the case. So I'm running around and trying to find this guy because I'm, I'm hoping that he'll just be lurking, which uh, was correct. I hear the guy in the middle pull up my gun. Managed to get a nice headshot on him, but at this point, I have no idea where this other guy is, right? So I flashed lower, hoping maybe he'll get blind and stuck on a box or something. The way he planted made me think even more that he planted for lower, but he didn't. He planted for upper ramp, which was pretty smart on his part. So this this commentary, maybe not the best. Um, granted that our match was pretty freaking sloppy and we got our asses torn. Um, however, we did learn a lot from this match and we were able to pick up on it that we did have map differences and ideas for example i knew we needed to take control of lower a and i knew we needed to take control of b that's just how the map works because it's such a quick and confined map but we weren't able to do that in our strategies on this on this match and actually we weren't able to do it very much on our next one either but it's still the fact that now my teammates know that and from this point forward we'll be able to move on which is the key thing right so i'm gonna say the key the high points of this match were uh some of the off shots I hit, you know, some were pretty good. But uh, aside from that, our pistol round worked really well, which was nice to see. Um, we just needed to be able to take proper map control like we did for that pistol round and work all the spots equally in order to keep the team second guessing. Otherwise, they do exactly like they did and just flank us and kill us, which is no good. So I guess my number one tip for, for Contra is to have proper map control. You need to keep the counter-terrorists playing on their feet. Otherwise, they're just going to run at you all over the place. And it's really easy to do that. Um, anyway, uh, once again, this is Waxed from Team Area 51. The quote-unquote Canadian team of Area 51. Um, and this would be my first commentary for Wan Source. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it at least a little bit. Maybe learned a little bit about what not to do. Because we, like, like I've said all along, we shit the bed. So don't play like us, and you'll be all right. <laughs> anyway, um, you stay classy, San Diego. Yeah. Later. 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 Later.